Well, good evening, friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ. I want to welcome you online to the Sydney United Methodist Church on this, our Ash Wednesday, Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, the first time in my many years of ministry we're doing an Ash Wednesday service, which requires me to put ashes on people's foreheads, and you're not here. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, between 12 and 7 today, uh, you took the opportunity to come by the churches to get ashes. It's a symbol of our faith. The ashes don't have special power. You can't dodge cars. Sorry, Ron, if you want to try to do that later. And this is the first day of the season of Lent. Throughout the centuries of the worshiping life of the church, they developed the season of Lent to lead us and guide us to the cross of Jesus Christ on Good Friday. On Good Friday, Jesus is going to shed his, shed his blood for the sins of the world, and we have a bridge to God through Jesus Christ if we but repent and turn to him. So this Ash Wednesday is the start of this season. These purple pyramids and altar rugs, we have purple, which is a color of royalty, and that's why we many churches, including ours, have them in Lent and Advent, as the birth of Christ is on Christmas. So I did email out these materials. They're also on our Facebook page. And I invite you to follow along. If you've never been part of an Ash Wednesday service, and you think this is some weird, spooky witchcraft thing, I assure you it's not. I'll explain why we do it, why it's significant, and why millions of Christians have done it for centuries. So our greeting this morning is responsive. I'm going to, or tonight, I'm so used to doing services in the morning. Our greeting tonight is responsive. I'm going to read, and you are, you are welcome to respond. It says, God sounds an alarm and calls us together. God hears our cries and heals our brokenness. The unison gathering prayer for this, our Ash Wednesday service tonight, is from the prophet Joel, chapter 2. And this is a prayer designed for us to say together. But Pastor Paul, because I'm Pastor Paul Winkleman, if you're tuning in for the first time, I'm not part of your church. I'm not a member. You can pray with us. I give you permission. <laughs> so feel free, if you have the unison gathering prayer, to pray this prayer on this Ash Wednesday. We turn to you, God of life, on this first day of Lent, as we recall our own mortality, with hearts torn open by our actions, we need your guidance and your healing forgiveness. Ready us to receive your mercy and grace and cleanse us of the ash of human failing that we may embrace the words you speak, words that lead to eternal life. Amen. In many Christian traditions, they celebrate great on the Sunday before Easter, Palm Sunday. Some churches will buy palms, maybe from the grocery store or the local florist, and they will wave them shouting, Hosanna. In some traditions, including ours, you're supposed to take those palms, dry them, and then burn them into the ashes for Ash Wednesday. I buy my ashes online, though, because I've tried to burn them and it did not go well. So I have primo store-bought ashes. But our, our opening hymn is in the faith we sing. It's called Sunday's Palms, uh, that is to say Palm Sunday. Sunday's Palms are Wednesday Ash Wednesday's Ashes. So if you have the music from the, the safety of your own home or wherever you're at, feel free to sing with us. And I know our own Jack Doyle is going to sing. Better you singing than me singing. So thank you for that, Jack. Please stand. <laughs>
for leading our call to worship and reading our scripture this evening. The call of worship comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2. Come, young and old, sanctify yourselves before the Lord. We gather to hear the word of God. Come, and do not delay. Return to God. We gather to be in the presence of God. Come, cry out to God. Trust in God's mercy. We gather to renew our spirits as we acknowledge our failings before God. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 51, verses 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are justified in, in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me, a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God. O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit and a broken contrite heart. Contrite heart. O oh God, you will not be despised. New Testament really comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 through chapter 6, 10. <laughs> we entreat you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God for our sake he made him to, to be sin who knew no sin so take, in, so take so that in him we might become the righteous of God as we work together with him we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through a great endurance and affliction, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truth of speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand, and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of preparation before I read the gospel for this uh, Ash Wednesday service. It's 402 in our hymnals, actually a very, very beautiful hymn, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Well, what does it mean to be a Christian? 
the basic uh, template in, in the New Testament and the Gospels is believe in Jesus Christ, give your life to him, turn to him humbly and repentant, and allow him through the power of the Holy Spirit to make you a new creation. So 402, Lord, I want to be a Christian. Jack, thank you again for singing. Jack has mastered the computer, so we're going to get, get, get him a video game controller. We'll see if we can upgrade to that. Huh? So please stand as you're able. <clears throat> So let's hear Matthew 6, 1 to 6, 16 to 21. I'll be reading from New Revised Standard Version. If you need to pause this for a minute in order to get your Bible or get the Scripture opened up, feel free to do that. This is what Jesus our Lord says to us from this Ash Wednesday. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they might be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so, your alms might be, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father in heaven, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. 
But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Once again, the Word of God through the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I have done a lot of Ash Wednesday services, and I grew up in different denominations, mostly evangelical, foot stomping, sometimes rock band churches. And I remember when I became a pastor, I had never done an Ash Wednesday service before. And I thought in my head, kind of judgmentally, what kind of weird pagan thing have I gotten myself into? And then I saw some of the people coming up for ashes, and they had tears on their face. In doing a little more research, what I found out, that was back when I knew everything, I realized that for centuries the church has been practicing this tradition on this 40-day season of Lent to either put ashes on the forehead or sprinkle them. You might remember, I think it was about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago, I preached on Jonah in the city of Nineveh. And how he said that God, our Father, has given you, wait for it, 40 days and 40 nights. Pretty common number, isn't it? 40 days in the wilderness for Jesus. The Jews were in the wilderness for 40 years. Noah was on the, the water for how long? 40. It's a popular number. I'm turning 40 this year, so that's cool, right? <laughs> so basically, 40-day season going into the, the death and death eventually resurrection of Jesus Christ. And since Nineveh, for example, was given 40 days and nights to repent, the early church eventually developed a custom to practice. Well, why don't we put ashes on ourselves? Because if you're really humble and repentant, according to God in the Old Testament, you have on burlap, you know, like a potato sack, and you have ashes on it. You're showing how you're stripped down and how you're repentant. That's why we put ashes on, not because I think it's going to be cool to smear something on Ron's forehead. On a side note, that is kind of cool for me. And he has to trust that I'm not going to, you know, put like, you know, kick me or something on his forehead. So this is the first Ash Wednesday service I've ever had to do virtually. And it kind of stinks because I have to put ashes on your head or somebody has to put ashes on your head. It's kind of hard to do that when you're not here. That's why I had ashes to go from 12 to 7 today. And we will, the few people here will get ashes with a rubber glove and a Q-tip. That's where we're at, okay? A, a blue custodian glove and a Q-tip, all right? So that it's just crazy. But you know what? We're in COVID. And I think the reality is when, when we heard our scriptures tonight, um, you know, some of the, some of the things I read that, in the gospel from Jesus, this season really is about us reflecting on ourselves. Not torturing ourselves, not beating ourselves. I remember hearing a story, I don't know if it's still the case, one of the cathedrals in Brazil, I don't know if it was San Paulo or one of the other cities, but literally, Catholic men and women would crawl into the cathedral on their knees on Ash Wednesday, or maybe it was Good Friday now that I think about it, because there was so much guilt and shame. I don't think this is a season where we have to beat ourselves up and torture us. The season of Lent, 40 days, was created by the, by the worshiping community of the church. And it was created because we have so many other 40s. We have 40 days of this, 40 years of that. And it only made sense in the worshiping life of the church for them to say, why don't we create a 40-day season that patterns all the other 40s in the Bible? And during this season, we are going to develop spiritual disciplines to draw closer to Christ. So many churches I know do a Good Friday service, yet I don't read anywhere in the gospel where Jesus says, tomorrow I'm going to die for the sins of the world, and after I do run, I want you to do a service of what happened this day every single year. It's not in there, but quickly in the worshiping life of the early church, they said, well, this is the day Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. Maybe, 
We should have a service to commemorate that. And then they said, but the day before he died for the sins of the world, he gave us the gift of communion or the Lord's Supper. He washed his disciples' feet. And then he gave us the monday or the commandment to love each other. Maybe we should do a service for that too, right? So none of these are strictly biblical in the sense that Jesus commands us to do them. But over the centuries of the church, through the worshiping life of the church, we were reading the story attentively, knowing that Good Friday was coming. So we added in some of these things. Not because it takes away from the scripture, because it adds to the scripture. Maybe you grew up, or maybe if you go to a different church, you still have Palm Sunday, one of my favorite Sundays in the life of the church. Jesus comes in on a donkey to the shouts of, Hosanna, save us. For a long time as a little boy, I wasn't allowed to get a palm till after church because I would usually tickle someone's ear, put it down, and it was like four tickles in before I got caught. Do we have to have Palm Sunday? No, but on that particular Sunday before Easter, Jesus came into Jerusalem with palms. So why not? It's a way to tell the story. It's a way to let people know this is what happened on this day. And then the Thursday of that week, we get together and break bread. We share the cup and the bread. We do the foot or hand washing. And we let people know that Jesus said to love each other. Because that's what happened on that Thursday, that holier Monday Thursday. And then we gather on Good Friday and everything stripped down. Because that's the day the Lord of our life, our Savior, died for our sins. It only makes sense. In fact, over the centuries, that week that Jesus died for us became known as Holy Week. Now this, it's funny, because this year, Monday, Thursday is on April 1st, so I was going to be like, here's the bread, April 1st, no, you can have it, here you go. So it's going to mess with me a little bit, I don't think Jesus would do that. So this is the first day of the season of Lent. Now I remember one time, because I used to pastor a church in Portland called Homer Ave United Methodist Church, and with the kids there, we would have this nice gift wrap box. And what they would do is every week, they, uh, one of the kids would put something in it, and I wasn't allowed to see it before the kids' message. I would take the lid off, and whatever was in there, I had to make a kid's sermon out of on the spot. And you can ask Melissa, there's some weird stuff that got put in that box, right? So I remember it was the first Sunday of, of Lent, which is this Sunday the 21st, and I asked the kids, they came up, we were sitting in, in, in the church in Portland, and I said, can anybody tell me what Lent is? A little girl named Natty, who's older now, because it's three years ago since I was there, she goes, oh, I know what that is, and I said, what? She goes, it's the stuff in my grandma's dryer. And I said, well, it's close, but not quite, and then a couple of weeks later, little Natty had the box, and I took the lid off, and there was a bag of lint in there from grandma's dryer, and I had to make uh, the, uh, the children's message about that. So this is a 40-day season that we're entering into on Ash Wednesday. Why do we do ashes? Why have different Christians all over the world been doing them for centuries, either sprinkling or smearing? It's a sign of our repentance. Think of us as the people in the city of Nineveh, the king all the way down saying, we repent. We turn to God. We turn to Jesus. Not because we're evil, awful, terrible wretches, because let's be honest, we're all broken and we're all sinful by nature. Ron, are you everything Jesus wants you to be yet? Are you, Jack? Are you, Melissa? I know that I'm not. So during this season, it's a cause to reflect on our lives. Where are the areas of our lives that we have not surrendered to God? Maybe you have anger problems. Have you surrendered that to God? This season of Lent gives us cause to turn and become more like Jesus Christ. Amen? And in this season, we can give up stuff. I remember my aunts used to give up chocolate and coffee, heaven forbid coffee. Or we can give away things. Maybe we can go home in this season of Lent and go, you know, I have a lot of this one thing. Maybe I don't need 500 door hinges. My stepdad had a lot of door hinges, and one year I got, as a joke, a box of door hinges. He literally had, at one point, probably 150 door hinges. Because you never know, right? So, so during this season of, of Lent, if you have things you don't need, give them away. Be more generous. Be more like Jesus. In this road that we walk to the cross, this season that very much the church created out of its worshiping life, not in the Bible, but we created it to give us a period of time to reflect on Christ's death. 
It's actually 46 days, but we don't count Sundays because that's the day of resurrection. Kind of funny in the historical Catholic Church because you give up something, but Sunday doesn't count. You can even pound a chocolate on Sunday. And I love, too, yesterday, down in New Orleans, they call it Mardi Gras. I've never been to New Orleans or Mardi Gras. I've seen videos. It does not look very Christian, to be honest. Uh, and also, some people yesterday do this thing called Shrove Tuesday. They have a pancake supper, and you just eat all this food. I think it's so funny in the Christian tradition that the day before Ash Wednesday, you go wild and get nuts and eat all this food, and then the next day you're like, let's repent, you know? So I don't, I don't think it's supposed to be too crazy and wild, uh, but that's where Mardi Gras and, and things like that come from. You know, and I think also, when we think about everything that Jesus goes through, the suffering that he goes through, the temptation that he goes through, maybe this year is different for us for Ash Wednesday. We're not just coming here and maybe things are good in our lives and we're going, well, how do we become closer to God? We're coming here during a time of pandemic. We're coming here during a time of loss. We're coming here during a time of not being able to see some of our family and friends for months. We're coming here not being able to see our aunt or our grandma in the nursing home because no one's allowed. We're coming here and some of our relatives or friends have died from COVID. We're coming here and some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us have lost our incomes. Some of us are in isolation and fear and anxiety about the future. And maybe, I don't know, it's a good time to turn to Jesus. Now, not only that, we've had blessings through this for those people that decided to not cancel their Netflix accounts. You're probably really glad you did that now because you're locked inside all day. you got to do something, right? And then you, you know you're in pandemic if somebody like Jack goes, Pastor Paul, anything new on Netflix? Only in a pandemic would that happen because I'm locked up for a week. Why not watch a new season, right? So we have experienced, all of us, different levels of pain and suffering. This season of Lent is not about beating ourselves or torturing ourselves. It's about walking with Christ and experiencing what he experiences. Now, some traditions, they do that physically. They whip their backs and do all that. We don't do that in our tradition because Christ has done that for us. But if you have been suffering, if this pandemic has been hard, if it has been one mighty cross to bear, the good news, friends, is on Good Friday, the sins of the world will be completely destroyed by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And all you have to do is turn to Him, and He will embrace you. So because of that tonight, as my sermon title says, I come here humble and repentant. I come here with my wife, Melissa and I, people that have had COVID and have, have recovered, Jack who's had COVID and recovered, who have been through a whole lot during this time, but realize my brokenness, realize my need for Jesus Christ. And realize how humbled I am to display a symbol of a cross on my forehead and palm ashes to show everyone here in the world I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that. In Psalm 51 for tonight, King David is crying out to God asking for forgiveness and a clean heart. In 2 Corinthians, we are called to be more like Christ, the one who had no sin. And tonight in our gospel lesson, we hear about not being fake, not being pretentious. Do we really want to draw closer to Christ? Do we really want to be more like God? Or is this just a season where we give up chocolate so we're grumpy? This time period that was created by the worshiping tradition of the church was created to point us closer to Christ. If Easter Sunday happens and you find that you are a little holier than you were 40 days ago, then Lent has been an advantageous thing for you. Friends, we have gone through so much in this season of pandemic, so much so that we have this service this way because we don't feel safe enough to have it in person. I don't know about you, but all the things we've lost in this pandemic, all the things that we thought were rock solid and unshakable, if anything, it's made me more humble and repentant. We've seen so much suffering. We're to the point where we've pretty much had a half a million people die in this country. It's time that we humble ourselves like the people of Nineveh did. Now, you can cover yourself in ashes if you want. I'm just putting some on the forehead. You can put on the burlap if you want. But humble ourselves before God. Not because we're terrible, 
but because God is God and we are not. Happy Ash Wednesday and happy Lent 2021. Well, Jack, we don't have a music ministry tonight, do we? Okay, all right. <laughs> he did not give up music for Lent, so, which is good. Uh, in, our, in our bulletin, we have what's called uh, an invitation to observe the Lenten discipline. Not the stuff in your driver. Uh, so Lent is just a word, I think it means 40 days, if I remember correctly. And this is just a period of time for us to draw our hearts and minds together. There's Lent studies, I, I've done one by Max Lucado. It's just a period of time for us to walk to the cross with Christ. Now I'm going to read this, um, and you're welcome to, to listen. I'm going to explain the historical reason for this season, and this is what it says. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became a custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day session of spiritual preparation. During the season, converts uh, to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time uh, when persons who had committed serious sins were rec reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, by reading and meditating on God's holy word, to make a right beginning of repentance. As a mark of our moral nature, let us now bow before our Creator and our Redeemer, and in the silence of these moments, go before God Almighty, the one we're trying to be more like, and let us tell God anything that we need to repent for. good news, friends, and I know what scripture says, I can't understand sometimes, maybe you can relate, Ron, how God keeps forgiving us over and over and over. We don't deserve it. We shouldn't have it. But if we go to Christ, his arms are wide open. Ours are not always, are they? But he forgives us because he loves us. We're now going to say that prayer that Jesus gave us almost 2,000 years ago. The Lord's Prayer, when he told his disciples, friends, when you pray, pray like this. And don't worry, I can say it anyway because I'm not sick. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, our trust forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Maybe I'm just destined to mess it up sometimes. I don't know. So these ashes, I want to be clear once again. This is not magical. This is not, you know, Martin and Bailey stuff. It's a symbol of our faith. And since many churches celebrate Palm Sunday, the burning of the palms, whether you do it out back or you're a prima donna like Pastor Paul and buy them on the internet, uh, this is the idea of repentance, the sackcloth and the ashes. The church over the centuries said, why not burn the palms? That's already part of the story. And some people keep them the whole year to the next year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to offer a, a, uh, a thanksgiving over the ashes. Not a consecration, not a baptism, not a communion, just a thanksgiving. So I'm going to go ahead and read these words. Almighty God, you have created us all out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now, again, because of, of COVID, this very unexciting thing that we have, we uh, are going to do ashes a little differently. I know that we have uh, myself, Ron, Jack, and Melissa 
So what we have is, I feel like a, a, a reverend medical doctor. So I'm going to put on this glove. This is exciting, right? <laughs> and when I'm going to have, I'm going to impose ashes on Ron. He's going to put, impose ashes on me. Normally, when uh, some churches do this, they might say, "From dust you have come, to dust you return." I like to say, "Repent and believe the gospel," because that points us directly to Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go ahead and impose ashes on Ron, and I'm going to read these things. And then you're welcome to do that with one of your hands looking like Papa Smurf. So let's see how this works. As good as my finger, but it's all right. There you go. Okay. So repent and believe the gospel. Okay, you gotta get a lot on it. <laughs> it's crazy. You have to do this. Call repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Thanks. Um, I'll put some on Melissa. Do you want to put some on Jack? Okay. And if you came by today for Ashes to Go, you got to have that wonderful experience of this rubber glove and that Q-tip. <laughs> and again, uh, these ashes don't make you uh, any better, any worse than anybody else. It's basically saying to you when you look in the mirror and to the world, I am repentant, I'm turning to Christ, and in the season of Lent, I want to be more like Him. And I don't know about you, but I wear this symbol of our faith, our historic faith, proudly. We've reached the part of the service, I do it a little later um, in the uh, Ash Wednesday service. I think after you get your ashes, the sign of Christ and repentance, it's then a good time to share the peace of Christ with each other. During this time of pandemic, we can't shake hands, we can't touch, we can't hug, we can't do any of that stuff. But what we can do is we can, um, we can wave. And what I, what I have built into this is we're going we're gonna to sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. So can you wave and sing at the same time, Jack? Jack is talented. All right, so so we're gonna we're gonna stand and wave to each other and say, "Turn your eyes upon Jesus." Three forty nine in our heaven. Three forty nine.
Friends, on this Ash Wednesday, this beginning of the 40-day season of Lent, on Ash Wednesday, a Lent that all was created as part of the worshiping uh, life of the early church. And it was created for the point and the purpose of pointing us to Jesus Christ. We have all been through so much in this pandemic. But the great joy I have in my heart and my soul, as I know you do and so many others, is that Jesus our Lord is with us through this time. Friends, you can turn to him right now. You can give him your life, you can give him your sin, you can give him your guilt, and he will embrace you. Jesus is the reason for Ash Wednesday. Jesus is the reason for Lent. All praise and glory to him. Friends, I bless you this evening in the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Won't you pray with me on this, our Ash Wednesday, 2021. Loving and merciful God, we come here tonight humble and repentant. We all have been through so much and about a year now of this pandemic. Maybe we've been through other things that have nothing to do with it. But we turn to you. We embrace each other. Not literally because we can't do that right now. But you get what I mean. And God, we just ask you to continue to walk with us through this time of Lent. May we walk toward your Son. May we seek to be more like him. And may we turn away from our sin and our darkness and our greed and our anger and our hatred. So that on the day of resurrection, Easter morning, we can be raised to new life in Christ. We can be more like him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, happy Ash Wednesday. Hope to see you all soon. God bless.